Good evening. Welcome to Icebreaker. I'm Senior Chief Vince Dickens, and this is the call where you can learn anything you want to know, hopefully, or at least ask the questions about anything you'd like to know regarding the base transition, and I think we're in our third or fourth icebreaker on the same topic. Uh, joining to me tonight, as always, our in-studio guest is Colonel Craig Croxton, Commander, Iceland Defense Force, Captain Mark Bodden, Commanding Officer of Naval Air Station Keflavik, Colonel Stephen Walker, the Deputy Commander of 85th Group, and Captain, Captain Michael McCartan, uh, Commanding Officer of Naval Hospital Keflavik. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me again. I think uh, uh, as we get down this road, we're getting uh, some of the questions answered, and, I, and I, I'm hoping that we're getting good information out there. Uh, as always, we're taking your calls at 4613, 4614, and 4550, uh, so be sure to give us a call, and we'll get your questions to the, into the hands of the, the folks that know. All right, sir. Uh, Captain uh, Lawton, I believe I'd like to start with you because uh, one of the questions that uh, has come up several times regarding the appliances that are left in the housing. We think we might finally be getting to the end of that one, I believe. Right. I think we have, uh, we've run that one down and we've come up with the determination that the uh, government property that is in housing units is not going to be available for uh, the member to buy or take with them when they PCS out of here. There's a process and and the folks at DMRO are telling us that that's not feasible right. to, to allow folks to take those when they depart. And that's the washers, dryers, dishwashers, refrigerators, right. all you, those appliances. You betcha. All right, sir. Uh, and since, since we're talking a little bit about housing anyway, uh, house, housing checkout procedures has been one that's come up several times. Do I have to repaint my walls? And all right. That? That, there's been several questions about uh, how, we, uh, how we exit our housing units. Uh, what I would tell folks today is, we're going to be following the same process that we've been following in the past. Uh, there's a procedure as you uh, signed up and took housing, took custody of housing. Uh, you signed up to an agreement of how you would turn it back over, and that will still apply. So, for instance, if you have a pet and your pet has soiled the carpet, uh, the carpet will be prorated uh, for the number of years it's been in use, and there will be a charge for uh, the carpet. Since, since you brought up pets, would you like to... Reiterate, hit that question one more time. Oh, what yes. Happened? What about uh, our pets? And what pets. Do? Let me please, again, reemphasize to folks, we need you uh, to make sure your pets are registered. If they haven't been, uh, if you have not been by security and uh, filled out the proper forms, we need you to do that. Allow us to get good accountability for where the pets are, the numbers that are out there. Uh, otherwise, we may get down to uh, the point of uh, putting people on airplanes and not being able to link them up with their pets uh, in a timely fashion. Yes, sir. And I, I know one of the, one of the big challenges we've got here now is is the um, uh, the household goods move as people do transfer, and we've uh, come up with a system that in, in essential turns the system upside down. Right. Uh, in the past, you know, you get your orders and you go over and you call and you make an appointment and go set up your household goods or your POV shipment. Uh, what we've done is we've uh, sort of inverted that system. And I would encourage folks to take a look at the roller channel. There's information going to be coming out about this. But basically, uh, when you get your orders, we are going to help drive the process so we can have a little control over uh, uh, the limited resources that we have with packers and, and moving household goods. So uh, as orders come in, whether they're Navy or Air Force, there will be a process in place uh, where the chain of command will basically come back to you and tell you, uh, here is your slot, go over and make the arrangements at that time. Okay, so more detail on the process to follow right. as that gets hammered out. Um, actually, I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to read that one, sir, while I uh, turn to Captain McCartan. Uh, part of the checking out process, we've hit up, uh, we've got a lot of people to, uh, to move and to get up to, to speed on their health issues, including getting their physical health assessments and so forth, because you... Bring us up to you, sir. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, Senior Chief. Um, at the hospital, what we request is that if people have uh, preventive medicine things that they need to be done, whether it is a an annual physical, a flight physical, if uh, if there is a an issue for the women's health clinic, uh, PHA, uh, please make those appointments now. We can try to front load our work in that regard uh, because once we start to disassemble our staff. Uh, we're going to get behind the power curve. So right now, we're fully manned. We're standing by. And I think as people have those requests and needs, we can handle them and accommodate. So all of those preventive health things, come see us. Yes, sir. Uh, preventive health, you're going to give us a bird flu update as well? Yes, bird flu, thanks. Uh, I think 
a lot of people, or if not all, uh, heard about uh, the detection of the H5N1 virus over in Scotland. And as we learned last month from the state epidemiologist here in Iceland, uh, the British Isles are essentially the doorstep to Iceland in terms of the migratory pattern. So right now we're anticipating that uh, you know, we will be seeing that virus in, uh, in Iceland. You know, I think we don't want to alarm people, but again, just to sort of make people aware. I think we've all kind of been distracted by closures and moves and all that, and we just want to make sure we you know, keep our heads on straight. So just to remind folks, uh, you know, if you do hear that the H5N1 might be detected in Iceland, it's not time for panic. Birds get the flu. This is a bird disease, and it's only an issue when people have very close contact and handle the carcass of, of a dead bird. So uh, don't you know, fret if we hear that, in fact, the virus comes up here. But number two, if you do happen to see a dead bird about, um, what we ask is that you call the base CDO, and then we, you know, on the base side, would take it for action. Uh, again, it's not a cause for panic, um, but it's something that we just want to stay ahead of, anticipating that we may be getting the news sometime that we do, in fact, have H5N1 in Iceland. All right, sir. Well, thank you very much for the update. And for you, don't forget to call us with your questions, 4613-4614 and 4550. We did have one, and uh, I believe the first one, I'm not sure what order they came in, actually. We had one about the uh, dependents, one of the, I like to call them family members, but they were talking about them. Uh, is there still that date? Right. Uh, the question is, what is the date that civilians and their dependents are required to leave Iceland? Uh, there's not an established date. We're obviously looking at our drawdown and looking at uh, household goods throughput. When people have orders, schools close, all those, all those things are rolling together uh, to try to coordinate it. Our goal has been and will remain to try to keep uh, members and their families together in that process. Uh, there is, again, not an established date, but I know there are folks out there that are asking the question, uh, hey, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm going to have all my work done on such and such a date, and I want to hang around for the summer. Hanging around for the summer is probably not going to be uh, a real good idea. The idea is to make the base get smaller, uh, and we've got to try to manage that as best we can. So uh, although there's not a, an established date, I would plan on leaving as soon as uh, your work's complete, your orders are in hand, your household goods are packed up, and it's probably time to to be on your way. Can I go back to the, to the uh, pet issue because yes, uh, I remembered something. Uh, just a few days ago I signed out a letter to uh, the Icelandic vets uh, basically authorizing them to come on the air station, uh, arrangements still being worked out there, but to come on the air station and use the old uh, IDF PAO building on the main drag coming in the base as a place where they can set up a shop and provide services to uh, pet owners for uh, immunizations, health certificates, all those kind of things, coordinating with the hospital folks and our uh, Army vets to make sure we're providing as much opportunity to take care of pets as we can. And that's actually the last real building on the right on the way out the gate if anybody does not know where that right. building is. My old home, my old home place. Uh, we also had another question regarding firearms, which I completely missed in my... Right. Uh, I guess basically somebody's asking, they've got, a, they've got a firearm, what do they need to do with uh, uh, getting prepared to PCS with that? And basically you need to talk to the, the military customs office at 2663 about that process, and there is a procedure in place for that. Yes, sir. Uh, Colonel Walker, I did want give to give you a chance to tell us a little bit about the, uh, the Air Force assignment team visit. We talked last week some about the Navy assignment detailing team. Right, so, right. Uh, can you tell us more about that, how it's going? Oh, absolutely. Uh, last week, uh, a team from USAFE came up and kind of briefed everybody on the rules of engagement. And, uh, and with that, let people know that there would be always, uh, even the last person in seniority would, would, would get a choice, which is not what always happens with the, uh, on the uh, enlisted side of the house with what the Air Force calls the equal system. Um, they uh, came back today and uh, a lot of folks had appointments and tomorrow they'll also have appointments where they're actually then going in and declaring their choices to the assignments folks. Now unfortunately that's about as far as it goes until we get the XORD and once we get the XORD then those assignments can then get loaded in the system. 
but at least people can now start to, to have an idea of their future and, and where they're going. For the officers, that's still being handled uh, by the Air Force Personnel Center uh, through their, uh, it's called the TODB process. And uh, we've, we've heard today that there are some folks that are starting to get um, some calls and they're talking assignments to them also. Great, sir. I know the question always gets asked by the person sitting in that chair is if when we expect the execute order, is there any more word on when that might be? The, there is not. There, there's a, still a lot of talk. We've had some, uh, some uh, opportunities to review what, what is going to look like the execute order, but it, it's still in that, that very high level staffing process at this time and, and uh, still, still waiting for more word. We'll see. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. Don't forget, 4613-4614-4550. Uh, we'll be here, of course, every Tuesday, but I did want to mention, uh, and ask actually Captain Lawton to mention, uh, the town hall schedule for the Navy people that we've had every Monday, we're, we're right. changing that a little bit now. We've been meeting every Monday and uh, drawing a pretty good crowd, but I think we're getting to the point to where we can start putting a little space in between, so we're going to start meeting every other week, unless there is a need. If, there's a, if there is a need and, and an urgency to get back together to go face-to-face -face on a weekly basis, we will, but we're going to try to put a little space in there right now. A lot of information is out there on the websites, through the chain of commands, on the roller channels, uh, in the White Falcon as uh, things are reviewed from, from these kind of venues. So uh, encourage folks to continue to use the information sources that we have. And if they're, we need to get together face to face, we will. And, and next week's icebreaker, I just wanted to put a plug in for ourselves. Right. I understand we're trying to actually Give, them, give us some timeline information. Right. Uh, we've been working the timeline, looking at uh, the personnel drawdowns and how it impacts services on the base. Uh, we're going to be putting some, I'll call them final touches on that this week toward the, toward the latter part of the week. And uh, our goal is to next week on Icebreaker be able to uh, basically map us out from today until 30 September uh, how the services are going to be impacted across the base so people will have uh, all the dates for planning factors, things like uh, the theater, the bowling alley that we haven't been talking about before. We're starting to get into some of those details. I would mention to folks, though, uh, a couple of things we do know tonight that have shifted a little bit, and I told the Navy folks about this yesterday. Uh, the main store of the Navy Exchange looks like it's going to slide left on us uh, and probably be closing around the end of June, uh, and also Community Bank slid a little bit to the right and that's going to look uh, to close somewhere around the 25th of August. So while we talk dates and we talk about this timeline we need to understand uh, these things are not set in stone and much uh, much is dependent upon uh, the stability of the workforce and we're going to have to play that as it comes. Yes sir, in fact the card came in about one of those uh, facilities type questions specifically for the Child Development Center. Right, we've been, uh, we've been looking at that one uh, because it's of particular interest to us. Uh, and right now we're, we're projecting that somewhere between the 15th and the 30th of June, the CDC uh, will not have sufficient staff to, uh, to be manned up. Yes, sir. Uh, just since so we can say we hit it one more time, the second vehicle question, can we ship a second vehicle back to the States? No, we have gotten the definitive answer on that. Uh, cannot ship it. Uh, with government funds. Uh, you can ship it yourself. If you have two vehicles, uh, the government will pay for one. The other is the three choices. And again, I refer you back to the website. Uh, you can go and, and get more information, but you can basically dispose of it following the proper procedure, sell it to an Icelander following the proper procedure, or ship it. And on the website now, we've got listed, I think it's four shipping companies uh, and their numbers and stuff that you can contact to make arrangements for that. But those are the three options for that second car. Right. And the, I think the question there was just related to insurance and, and the requirement to reinsure. Right. Uh, still required to uh, insure your car. Uh, the question has been out there in the past, uh, you know, I'm going to be leaving in, in a couple of months. Do I have to buy the whole six months? Uh, yes, you do. Uh, you're going to end up buying that and then when you get ready to go and you pull the the tags and everything come off the car and there's a piece of paper given to you you go back to the insurance company and they reimburse you for the uh, prorate you for the rest of the the time you're not using it and this one just has to do with general transfers i would imagine it applies equally well to the navy and the air force uh, it's uh, for people leaving in september whose dependents leave earlier oh well if if they're uh if they're 
dependence on your page two or in your proper form of your Air Force record, uh, they're paid for by the U.S. government. Uh, you know, there, there are lots of folks out there that are uh, looking at the, the prospect of moving their family because they've got a critical skill set and they've got to stick around for a little bit longer. Uh, that's a normal occurrence that once you have orders, uh, you can go through the process. Once you have accounting data, you can go through the process and uh, actually move your dependents before you move yourself. All right, sir. Uh, just I wanted to remind everybody, normally we, we stay on as long as we get calls. And uh, in the old days of icebreaker, it was usually about a 30-minute deal. Mm -hmm. And the last few weeks, is we've stretched it out to an hour, an hour and 15 minutes to make sure we answer your calls. Uh, don't miss this opportunity. Like I said, 4613-4614-4550 for your questions uh, for our panel. In fact, I believe we've got a late breaking yeah. card coming in right now. Senior, while you're, while you're picking that one up, let me remind folks, uh, because I know they're out there, uh, there's somebody right now on the base who has not pulled out their passports, has not pulled out their staying visas, and checked the dates. And they're going to get orders, and then they're going to pull out their passport, and they're going to realize their passport's expired. I, I encourage you, please, please, pull your passports uh, for all family members. Take a look at the dates. If it's before 30 September, if it expires, or your staying visa runs out before 30 September, we need to get working on that very, very quickly. Yes, sir. And I'll give you a chance to read this one, and I'll, I'll tag on to that by saying I would also bet there are people leaving soon that have not set aside their ration card, their vehicle security cards, their restricted area badges, and all of those sort of mm -hmm. things to make sure that uh, they're ready to turn those in when the time comes right. as well. Uh, this question has to do with the internet. When's it going to be turned off? Uh, you know, when are the computers going to come down at uh, at work? Uh, there's a whole litany of uh, items that are uh, provided to us through either MWR or NCTL phones and all that stuff. Uh, I would just ask you, let us iron out a few more dates this week. That's all coming together, and next week we will be able to talk about specific services like that. Uh, in general, the goal is to maintain those kind of things as long as we possibly can, and I think it'll be uh, well after most of the family members and stuff have departed the island that those services will, will come down. But next week, I'll give you more on that. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to give everybody a couple more minutes to, uh, to call in. Uh, it looks like the cards have started slowing down, uh, which could be a good sign. We hope it means that people are getting the information they need and, and that sort of thing. Um, Kevin McCartan, one thing I did want to hit one more time with you is, and I know we've talked about it at least once in other shows, is the medical record process because I want to make sure that there's no confusion because last time we talked about now the age was 14 as opposed to adult age and some other things. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, on the medical records and just the, in the big picture, they are technically the property of the government. So we are responsible for maintaining them in all. In this kind of a situation where we are emptying out the record room en masse, uh, we want to make accommodations. So um, the way the procedures would work is that um, an active duty member, uh, once they start at PSD, um, you know, they can make their way over to medical at the hospital, and we will turn over records to the active duty member. Now, what I would want to caution everybody is that when you do come, please bring a copy of your orders. We just need to make sure that you know, everything lines up and we have the correct person, correct social security number. For other family members, um, for a spouse, the active duty member can pick up the spouse's health record if the spouse has signed off a waiver granting them permission. The same situation holds true for a child who is 14 years old or older. And that is based on really the law of the land. Uh, there's a whole clause of emancipated minors and all that. So people in 14, 15, and 16 years age do have certain legal rights, and um, there is a privacy issue there. So we'd be asking the active duty member to sign off, I mean, to obtain a signed <coughs> waiver from their 14-year-old child uh, to pick up their health record. Children 13 or younger, uh, the family member of the active duty member can pick up the records. Uh, the question was asked last week, uh, can a spouse or a child 14 years of age or older pick up their own health record? And the answer is yes. Um, I uh, said you would need to have a valid ID, and, and that is correct. And then when I went to work the next day last week, my subject matter expert reminded me 
that that person, too, should bring a copy of the orders. And again, it's just to make sure that we can validate we are handing the proper record to the proper family and that we have no, you know, nothing missing in the action. And then while we're talking on records and the whole thing of getting records straight at uh, the hospital, please don't forget also um, that uh, disenrolling at TRICARE is, is a critical piece of the puzzle as well. Um, we have uh, Josh Hansen. Mr. Josh Hansen is sitting in the office standing by. And to get disenrolled here in Keflavik before you move on would be important because when you do disenroll, you are given a window of uh, 45 days, and as you make your way to your next duty station, you will remain in TRICARE Prime, meaning that if you were to walk into a military facility in Kansas, they would be able to recognize your name um, and provide services. In failing to check out, uh, you will have, you'll be running the risk of having your name just sort of automatically being deleted, in which case you turn into a pumpkin and nobody between here and the next duty station is going to recognize you, and once at the other end, you're going to need to start from scratch. So please do come by the hospital and disenroll in TRICARE when you're departing Iceland. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. And we've had a, a flurry of activity on the, card, on the, on the cards coming in. Uh, actually, I may let uh, Colonel Walker get off the hook there. He has his one. It had to do with the, uh, detail, or the A1 team, the assignment team coming in. Right, right. This individual would like to know... Uh, um, if they have an update on the retraining status of those folks that are in retraining. And unfortunately, no, we do, we do not have uh, uh, the word on that yet. We're actually still, they're still looking into it. So, sorry, we're going to have to wait another week before hopefully we can get an answer back on the, on the status of people that have put in applications for retraining. Thanks, right, sir. Uh, for Captain Lott, I think you had at least three that I, I caught there. Um, Actually, I'll, I'll let one you take them in, in the order that you have. Yeah, so. one, one of these uh, we've, we've heard before, and we've actually uh, passed this one off to, uh, to somebody that's tracking it down for us, and that is, have you looked into priority housing uh, for sailors transferring? Uh, we actually, uh, I gave that one personally to the fleet uh, mass chief when he was on board last week, and he promised me he would take that one back and talk to the CNO staff. Uh, he... As a matter of fact, he, he mentioned that he had heard of this happening before, uh, but he wasn't sure if our circumstance would meet the same criteria that it's met in the past. So that one we'll know more uh, here soon. I expect him to get back to us. Another question is, if you're taking the ferry to PCS to Europe, what do you do with your license plates for your automobile? I don't really know. We'll have to uh, take that one and, and talk to the folks uh, at the district commissioner's office and see if there is a process that we need to follow to make sure that's taken care of. And the third question is, if you have a reservation for Iceland Air and they bring back the rotator, can you cancel your reservations and take the rotator? I believe you probably could. Uh, it wouldn't be an automatic thing uh, and we would need to somehow inject that into the process. Uh, don't count on the, on the rotator coming back. Uh, I think there will be some requirement in probably the July time frame, I will speculate, uh, that we're going to need some extra lift capability. But uh, uh, right now, looking at some of the numbers, uh, we may all just jump on ice air and, and go, go about our business. We'll, uh, we'll play that one close. Let me, uh, let me mention to folks, uh, because you're out and about the base and you're in the mini mart and you may be seeing some things out there that are, that are uh, troubling you. Uh, we are looking at some of our contracted services that are provided there in the Mini Mart, uh, and Ron Dahl at the Navy Exchange is working with the contractors. Uh, but we're getting some indication that some of the contractors are, are starting to lose money, and uh, obviously they're in the business to make money, uh, and they cannot sustain an operation that is, uh, well, it's got cash going the wrong way. So uh, you're going to be hearing some stuff about uh, cafetar and uh, you know barber shops and beauty shops and optical shops uh, and I would just tell you we're working with those folks to uh, maintain services as best we can but uh, they're definitely going to be on a drawdown also. All right, sir. Uh, I'll pass you that one. One actually came in already actually it's, I guess it's mine uh, dealing with TV channels. Uh, when are the TV channels going away? Uh, I can tell you that our if I had my way, they would be on all the way till September 30th. Um, I do know that over the summer, 
uh, probably around June or July at the latest, we're going to be taking down our, our radio towers uh, so that we'll still have AM F and FM, but they'll be transmitted through the base cable system. Uh, I've been assured by Public Works that we'll have cable and electricity uh, throughout the problem or throughout the time, so that's no problem. Uh, so we're going to try to maintain TV services right through to the end. Uh, the one thing we're, we're still working on, just so you know, is that uh, there is an issue with we have our dishes and our towers, uh, and that's still being worked out whether we'll be allowed to leave those in place when we leave or not. If we can, then it's very easy to just to keep receiving the signal. But if we have to somehow take those down or dispose of them, that may cause us to lose TV early. But our our hope is all the way till the end. And that's the plan. Uh, Run right, over so. to the Navy Exchange and buy a couple of good books. That's right. <laughs> plan there probably will probably have a seventy five percent off sale. Be prepared. Um, Question we got is uh, can we service. increase the bus service since we'll be shipping our cars? Uh, yes, we're planning on that. The good folks at uh, Public Works are already putting together a plan. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I know they're they're working on that, and uh, it'll be our goal to provide some increased service as people ship off their cars. Yes, sir. Doesn't that. mean it's going to turn on tomorrow, though. Yes, sir. Another, I think this is a follow-up to the last one, a clarification question on the car inspection and insurance. Uh, yeah, if uh, somebody's got a car inspection that's coming due, uh, the annual inspection, can we uh, get a waiver uh, for those leaving in the next uh, month or so? Uh, car inspections is an Icelandic... Uh, law, and uh, at present we don't have uh, the ability to waive that. Uh, we can sure ask that question, but I would not. Uh, I would not anticipate a favorable response uh, for that. That's uh, part of their economy. It's part of us being here, uh, and I, and I don't think we would uh, be accommodated for that. But but we can ask. All right, sir. Uh, well, once again, I think we, we've slowed up on the cards a little bit. Uh, I did want to take one turn around and make sure we didn't miss anything and also to give everybody a chance to, to input or, or, or sum up or however you want to put that. So Colonel Croxton, sir, if we could start with you. Yeah, I think a lot of questions and a lot of stress has, uh, has gone down in this, these last two weeks because people have assignments in hand or they know, know where they're going. Um, the next big push is going to be with the household goods and the level is going to rise again. Um, with that in mind, though, you have to be aware of, uh, of our Icelandic uh, local nationals that, that have, have jobs here and uh, their next big stressor is uh, as we start to pack out a lot of them will be approaching the time where they have to leave their job so I just ask everyone be uh, aware of what's going on with uh, throughout the base and it's it's just not a an isolated incident so kind of open your view up a little bit wider and uh, and be cognizant and aware of uh, what's going on with our local nationals, because they're undergoing a very stressful time also. Hi, sir. Colonel Walker? Well, I know it's, uh, it's really frustrating to, to not have word on uh, exactly the timelines that the Air Force is working with, uh, with drawing down the mission and, and those requirements. Um, please be patient. The, the wheels are turning. Unfortunately, they are very, very slow. And... Uh, also, I'd like to emphasize, and I brought this up today at our quarterly awards uh, luncheon, uh, please please watch and take care of each other. Um, as Colonel Croxton said, there is, there is a lot of stressors out there, and we all need to, to make sure we're taking care of our folks. And, uh, you know, be good wingmen and watch out for each other during this, during this period of time. Nice, sir. Thank you. Uh, Captain, I see we got, like I said, under the wire. Well, we'll, we'll, let, uh, we'll let Colonel uh, Walker read that one over. I think it's a... Uh, almost a follow-up okay let's see here um, do they make service members with family members working on base stay here longer um, no you know not really that's that's really based upon um, the established departure date in other words the the military member will have a, a departure date that their their commander will set for them based upon mission needs and that's the time they'll, they'll flow out. We will not hold military members here as a result of, of dependents that, that, that have jobs. Right. Thank you, sir. And, I, and if Captain Lawton, I'm, I'm sure, I know we've done a lot of work yeah. identifying those spouses who do work on base and where they work and how that might affect services. Uh, later. We have. We've, uh, we've mapped out uh, both Navy, Air Force, and the civilian sector and uh, know where everybody is, what they're doing, and, and what the impact's going to be. And that's what we're building our timeline against. Nice, sir. 
Another question came in is, uh, will the mail be forwarded as usual? Yes, it will. You need to be thinking ahead, uh, planning for those changes, uh, and uh, putting in place the proper postal documents that take care of those kind of items. And somebody heard you about the books. <laughs> All right, this has got to be Chief Callan out there someplace. Will the exchange be ordering any new books? Uh, I would imagine that uh, Ron Dahl, if he sees the opportunity to make a, another dollar for the Navy Exchange, he'll probably seize that opportunity. Yes. <laughs> All right, sir. Did, uh, and actually, we were just trying to give you a chance to say a final few words when the... I would just echo again uh, what my two colleagues have said. Uh, we've got an awful lot going on. There's a tremendous amount of good work uh, occurring around the base. A lot of uh, people thinking about the process and planning ahead. Uh, the coordination and the cooperation between Navy and Air Force is uh, as good as I have ever seen in my 26 years. Uh, I would caution us, though, as we, as we now start getting from the planning stage into the execution stage, and we start uh, trying to push this pig through the snake, uh, that as we are ramping up household goods shipment, the, the tendency of all of us who, uh, who wear the uniform or work in uh, the DOD sector is that we're going to get the job done. And uh, we'll figure out a way to get the job done, even if it's uh, taking some shortcuts sometime. I would caution us, uh, be very careful taking shortcuts. Uh, be very careful of uh, uh, going around procedures that are established. Every one of us, whether you're an 06 commander or you are a, an airman or a seaman, has the ability and is powered, empowered to say stop. We're not going to take that shortcut. This is not the right thing to do. There's too much risk, and we need to uh, make sure folks understand that. Uh, we're going to do this. We'll get to 30 September. We'll look back on this uh, with a feeling of accomplishment if we do it without anybody uh, getting hurt killed, equipment damaged, or uh, doing something that damages our relationship with the government of Iceland. So, folks, you all have the power. Use it. Nice, right, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll let you read that one over to Captain McCartan. Well, <clears throat> I guess just to echo everything that's been coming down line, just the whole safety issue. Uh, we at the hospital, of course, will be involved in any kind of uh, mishaps, and, and that is not... Uh, why we like to stay in business. So please, yeah, do take care of each other, take care of yourselves, follow those safety procedures. Um, taking care of yourselves, just the two messages I had tonight, just please, uh, for preventive medicine purposes, come see us if you have things pending. Uh, as we start to uh, release our staff, uh, our ability to meet your needs are gonna start to dwindle. Uh, and then number two, just finally on the bird flu, uh, just be aware that it's out there. Uh, for your own edification, you could check into cdc.gov, the website for the Center for Disease Control, cdc.gov, uh, fabulous information, and, and that could, uh, you know, just allay a lot of fears that might be out there, uh, but right now everything's under control, and we're just going to take this nice and methodically. Hi, right, sir. Thank you. And we did have one more question about the post office. Right. Uh, post office, there's a new procedure out there. It says you, uh, you need to make an appointment if you're shipping, uh, I think it's more than two packages. Uh, the question is, can that be relaxed? We have a very limited postal staff, uh, and they are trying to move a lot of boxes and a lot of, uh, a lot of packages for people. Uh, we thought that this was an, an idea that would actually provide better service to people so you don't have to go in there and stand in line for uh, 45 minutes. Uh, if you know you've got uh, more than two packages to mail, you establish a... Uh, you sign up for an appointment and you come in and get your work done or get your packages out and get back to work or, or doing whatever it is you need to do. Uh, we'll relook this. Uh, I would encourage folks, if you got a better idea, uh, give us some thoughts on how we can better serve you, uh, recognizing there are very limited resources right now. Uh, I think uh, this is probably a good time to mention as we, as we look at how our services are being impacted in the drawdown, let's all remember uh, it's going to take all of us to get through this, and there's going to be some opportunities there for those that are willing to step up and say, hey, I can give you a couple of hours uh, at the post office, uh, you know, to come tote some boxes for you or help you guys while the folks at the front counter are doing what they have to do uh, and have certain qualifications to do. 
there's going to be other places out there that people can say, I can make the community a little bit better by giving an hour here, an hour there. And I would encourage folks to, uh, to look for those opportunities. And for the post office, are we still looking at September 15th as the tentative close date? No, we're actually looking at September the 28th, if I'm not mistaken. We're planning on running the post office right up to the end because we know even that uh, that last group of folks that are here are going to have some needs that need to be met. And we also, our post office is tied with the embassy downstairs, and we want to provide them the service as long as we possibly can. All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, like, thank you for joining us, and thank all our commanders again for once taking time out to come visit with us and give us the latest update information on it as the transition continues. Uh, be sure to tune in next week, same day, same time, and you'll be able to uh, maybe get a timeline next week and get you that much more closer to the knowledge you need. Don't forget that we re-air this every Thursday night at 6 p.m., so make sure you tune in for that on Roller Channel 21. And from all of us here at AFN Keplovic, have a good night.